So I'm down in town here and I came to collect bitter almonds to make almond extract because I ran out from the stuff I made a couple of years ago. And this is my bitter almond tree that I usually harvest from and it's completely dead. So that's a bummer. I met this old guy who's lived here, lived in the same house his entire life, worked all over the hills doing, you know, everything, logging, ranching, and whatever is available. And he also used to farm his land down here on this flat by the creek, and he grew almonds. So what these are is they're escaped rootstocks because people used to plant bitter almonds as rootstocks. So these are just a mix of wild almonds that are, you know, probably crosses between domesticated almonds that we eat and this wild bitter rootstock that produces almonds, which are bitter. Um, they taste like cyanide basically because they do contain like cyanide compounds, which is where that yummy almond flavor comes from. And that's what I want. And I'm gonna extract that with alcohol and use it for the next few years. So here's one tree here. That's a lot of almonds on it. You just have to see if they're sweet or bitter. No, it looks good. Whoa, definitely better. Yeah, that's crazy better. Here's another tree that's in the shade. These almonds look a lot healthier. It's just a little sapling. This is what I'm looking for right here. This tree's loaded. So this creek is the creek that starts in my house. It's totally dry at this time of year. It's my springs feed this creek. I'm probably about, as a crow flies, like eight miles from home, seven or eight miles. I'm just gonna sit here with my basket of bitter almonds, watch YouTube videos, and shell these all out. That's what I'm doing. Like I said, I, I usually keep pretty soon expert. But anyway, this Husqvarna axe, the specs on it, I'm just So here's the husk almonds. They should dry pretty well just like this. I might put them in a flatter tray, put them in the sun for a couple days. But they'll be easier to shell once these shells dry out a little bit because right now they're a little bit um, too flexible. I don't have too many here, but enough to do like a little micro batch. I'm just going to sliver these up. Nobody told me how to make this. I just knew that better almonds are used to make almond extract, and I was at the creek one day and I found these almonds and I knew what they were from because I know about almond growing and grafting and all that stuff. So I just brought some home and poured some alcohol on them and it worked. These are probably semi-toxic. They do contain cyanide compounds, which is what why they taste like almond. And generally, if you find things that smell strongly or taste strongly of almond, they usually have cyanide compounds. Maybe always, I don't know. But that doesn't mean that they're bad for you necessarily in small amounts. In fact, they may be healthy in small amounts. I believe that they actually are. I wouldn't make a liqueur out of this, you know, like a ton of these and then drink it all at once. It might, I don't know, maybe that would kill you. I don't really know. But I just do this and um, I haven't died yet. There's my recommendation right there. I ain't died yet. This is just vodka, you know, cheap vodka in a glass bottle. I keep it around for making this kind of stuff. So, there we go. Just gonna let that sit around for a few months and then I'll strain it and keep it in a little bottle, a dark bottle, and it just keeps for years, you know. I use it probably more than anything else in smoothies, like a, any kind of fruit smoothie, but especially anything with uh, berries in it and also anything with cherries. So cherry jam, cherry pie, definitely always use this. Uh, it really accentuates the cherry flavor, which is also, you know, very similar to almond flavor. Look at this little fella. Things hardly even moved. I totally shook the stick he's sitting on. See? Might just be cold.
No, he's plenty lively. <laughs>